5 o'clock so that I could uh, make sure I was on down here. I didn't know how, how long is the commute from Senator? Well, it's a while, but uh, I came last night. My my daughter and her family live here in Hillsboro, and so, but, uh, you know, I used to live up here, but I forget how much traffic there is, right, in today's world. You didn't forget it, more of it. So I give myself plenty of time. I think I was the first one in here, maybe, this morning. Anyway, so how are you guys all doing? Everybody's doing good? So uh, again, my name is Keith Taylor. Um, now it's not going to work, I suppose. Turn it off. Turn it off and on. I can do it for you. Explain me. Next slide. <laughs> Next slide. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. There we go. So uh, my name is Keith Taylor. I uh, had a stroke uh, a few years ago, and what I do now is my company is Strength After Stroke, and I help other stroke survivors uh, regain their passion, intention, and execution. It's simple as pie. So that's kind of my tagline, and that's what I do. So there it goes. So can you guys imagine? You know, you're owning your own business. You're, you know, making a pretty good income and enjoying your life and working and working hard, but everything is going pretty well. And then uh, all of a sudden you have no control and you're, you feel like you're losing everything. Well, that's what happened to me. So I uh, had a business in uh, Salem and we had it for quite a while. And anyway, uh, so one day I was getting ready to go to Seattle, and I, I started from home. I, I'd start out at home, and then I, I was a sales manager for our company and one of the owners. So I was getting ready to go to Seattle the next day, and so I was feeling really tired, and uh, I never took naps, but all of a sudden I, I needed to that day. And so I took a nap, and I just I didn't feel like anything was too obvious. But uh, my wife came home from work and checked me all out and did a bunch of tests on me and stuff. And I was like, why are you doing all this, you know? And uh, we didn't think much of it. And so the next morning, she went to work very early in the morning. So the next morning, she took off, and, and I got up and was getting ready to head off to Seattle. Well, um, you know, I, I knew I needed to be on my A game because we were building our company and, and um, you know, I was growing the Seattle market. Uh, so all of a sudden my my uh, nephew calls me and we used to talk like 6.30 in the morning all the time and just visit. And pretty soon he's like, well, what is wrong with you, Uncle Keith? <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what you're talking about, you know. Uh, I just thought it was kind of comical, and I said, I'm getting ready to go to Seattle. I said, well, hang on a little bit before you go, and and uh, I'll get back to you. Okay, so then my business partner called me, and it was a similar uh, experience. He was, you know, just chatting with me, and then he's like, what the heck is going on with you? And I was like, <laughs> again, I thought it was kind of comical. And uh, he said the same thing. He said, you know, before you go anywhere, just hang up for a little bit. Next thing I know, my wife gets home from work, now it's still early morning, and takes me to the hospital. You know, and it's like, so what is wrong with me? You know, I get to the hospital, and uh, they're asking me all kinds of questions, you know, and I didn't know my, I didn't know the date, I didn't know my birthday, I didn't know, the only thing really I knew was my wife's name, my kids' names, and that was about it. And I. I really thought it was comedy. I, you know, it was kind of hilarious to me. So um, let's see. I had a stroke. So stroke is a leading cause of long-term disability in the U.S. Now we were talking. I was talking to somebody earlier this morning, but does anybody know the stats on stroke? How much? I mean, versus like death, or I don't either. I should, but. I know it's a it's a huge huge problem uh, in everywhere, especially in the states. And so it's one thing that uh, I really like to focus on, of course, right? 
there I am in the hospital. I went to three different hospitals through uh, a couple of days' time trying to figure out what exactly was wrong. I had a special uh, case of a stroke and and uh, they call it HHT, which not anybody needs to know what that is, but anyway. So uh, there I am with my daughter. So before that, I was this happy, you know, go lucky guy, sales manager for our company. Um, like I said, we I was really healthy. You know, I wasn't overweight or anything at the time. <laughs> uh, we uh, grew our company to over thirteen million dollars uh, in eight years, and um, it's not a company that any of you guys are familiar with. I'm sure we we manufactured cabinet doors, and uh, so we would sell the cabinet makers. And so, anyway, we were putting all the profit back into the company because that's what you do. You know, in order to grow a company and to get your company bigger and to keep it growing and healthy and you got to add employees and all this stuff, you got to put all your money right back into the company. It's not like any of us were making a huge amount of money. So then, uh, only 22 days prior to my stroke is when we signed on the dotted line to get our insurance. Is that crazy? So we went through the process with our sales guy, and and uh, and it's a long process, as all you guys know, I'm sure, especially for uh, businesses, and and you know, there's a lot involved in that. But it was 22 days before I had my stroke when we signed on that insurance policy. It's pretty crazy, actually, if you think about it. So can you imagine being the owner of a company? You want to help build from scratch, working your tail end off, you know, feeling like you're getting somewhere, feeling like, you know, you know where you're going for retirement. You know, you're, you're building this company and working your butt off and so that, you know, when you retire you can have, you know, some life right at the end, which is what we all want, right? And then boom, everything changes. And need a nap every day. I still nap. <laughs> Believe it or not, I still take a nap almost every day. Uh, you don't remember things. Feeling like you're not adding value to the company. You know, um, I'll take a little second here and tell you guys. So um, this this happened, and we tried a few things in the company, and the next thing you know, I'm being a delivery driver. Now this is a company that I, I helped build. We had over 100 employees, um, you know, lots of customers, and I became a delivery driver because I just couldn't, you know, we tried a few things and my mind just wasn't there. And after you have a stroke, it takes a while to get things going, right? Not that they are now, but <laughs> anyway. So I'm this delivery driver, and I would have to take my iPad with me and plug in every address that I went to, no matter if I've been there four or five times or not. So I can remember going to uh, a guy's shop over and over, and every time I get there, I think, dang it, you know, I know this guy, right? But I'd have to plug it in. Uh, and also, I would take a nap on the road almost every day somewhere, you know, I'd find a place to pull over and then I'd take a little nap. Yeah. They probably thought I was a crappy driver too, <laughs> right? So anyway, uh, because we had enough insurance though, you know, now I'm able to do this. I mean, uh, I'm able to help other people. I help other stroke survivors um, and I can work on getting better all the time. You know, I've got options. You know, we, we're planning for our future. We're saving. Uh, you know, I'm spending a lot of time with my family. There's uh, two of my grandbabies. I got two more grandbabies. Okay. Now I got four. Uh, you know, I would have had to file for bankruptcy for sure, right? Um, there's enough stress when you have a medical issue, then. And, and if you add finances onto that, it just makes it that much worse, right? 
So, and listen, I know everybody goes through something in their life. I get that. Uh, we all do. No one is is free from that. However, having a stroke um, is just one of those big things that you know. All of a sudden, you don't have. I mean, you may not have any money or anything if you lose your job. So uh, now my wife is home full time. You know, she's not working anymore. I, I get to spend time with my family. My income is where it, it used to be, believe it or not. So I was making, uh, you know, a fair amount of income. It was six digits. And uh, this insurance policy that we went through, disability, pays me that now. And uh, it would have, I mean, you think about that. Who would have ever thought that would have happened, right? And that's what, that's the power that you guys have to help other business people out there. And, and so when you, well, I'll get to it, but it's, it's emotional to me almost. Uh, you know, uh, if I didn't have that, I don't know where I'd be today. So I'm living a thankful life because of it, you know. Um, how do we decide? Okay, so here's here's the thing. You know, we need we knew we needed protection to grow our company. Now we had uh, bought some low rate insurance uh, as Not we were growing. Pardon me. Not Northwestern. Not Northwestern yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I'm talking about just a, a auto auto uh, policy and that kind of stuff. I'll get to that in a second. But <laughs> so. We had this low rate insurance. Well, one of our drivers headed to Bend one time, and uh, he ends up hitting a lady um, coming home. We didn't even know it, but he had had his wife join him, which is against our company policy. And she got hurt really bad. Her and the woman that was driving the other car both got hurt, I mean, super bad super bad. And it was uh, not a good situation for us. We, we couldn't get help when we needed it because we, we had this low rate insurance, right? So we, we tried to call these people. It took forever. Um, you know, they, they oversimplify and they overpromise. They can't help manage your claim. It was, a, it was a tough situation for us. Now remember that also as you guys are selling your insurance because I know that you guys have great insurance. And it's not always about who's got the cheapest insurance out there, right? And you've got to be able to, to get that across to people. Um, oh, you know, I was going to tell you guys, uh, I think I already did. Never mind. So uh, getting the right agent is, is the key. And this, is, uh, this was one of my partners. Michael, he was the CEO of our company. And he told me, he said, selecting a good insurance broker is about relationship. It's about finding a person who's investing in, invested in the success of the company, actively engaged to help see what is changing in the insurance landscape and to adapt the products as the company grows. This person needs to be tough skinned and learn how, to, how the customer needs to see data so that they can make informed decisions. And you know, that's his, his little play on it. And, and I understand where he's coming from. He was the guy making the decisions on the insurance that we had. And of course, we'd come together and make final decisions on everything and vote and everything. But um, it's just a, it, it's a huge key. So just remember that as you're selling. Some people have fear of sales, right? I know that. I mean, I was a salesman forever. Uh, it may seem like it's thankless, but uh, but in the end, you're helping the people. You know, you're not a used car sales uh, person, and not that I'm not bashing that or nothing. I'm just saying that you guys are helping people put their financial plans together because shit happens, right? And when when it happens, they got to lean on something, right? Uh, uh, otherwise, it's like me. You know, I'd be out of the job. I I don't know what I'd be doing. So. You know, I, I was a highly paid delivery driver, right, <laughs> that would get lost half the time. <laughs> uh, the company would struggle to make extra money they needed to grow. 
our insurance uh, was set up so that when, when this all happened, um, and I didn't know it at the time, but when our insurance paid, they also cut a check to the company for a quarter of a million dollars. And that helps the company, you know, keep me going for a little bit of time and then also buy, pay for another, you know, sales rep or somebody that they need to keep the company going. It's a very, it was a very good thought out plan, I, I thought. So, um, and it can create a lot of bad times uh, with people. And you know what, that's going to happen anyway. I mean, my partners, I've known them forever and uh, it was a tough deal. Um, you know, we don't hardly ever talk anymore, and it's because of the way that goes. But, you know, I look back at that and I think, if I was in their shoes, what would I have done? You know, um, would I have kept a guy like me who is a delivery driver, you know, getting paid six digits a year to, you know, drive? Anyway, so I have to remember that. And, gets me back on the right plane field, I think. <clears throat> Ask yourself, why do I sell? And I'm not going to go through all these. But, you know, just think about what I'm saying. Think about the importance of having a business or even just people that work for other companies out there that need insurance. You know, I wish I knew, and I'm going to find out, the percentage of disability. Uh, but it's high out there. Besides, if I, you know, would have died, I wouldn't have cared, right? <laughs> so, I, have, I have life insurance too. But <laughs> uh, so more more people are starting their own company, right? We all know that uh, businesses need this kind of insurance. If you're, will, if you're willing to stand in there and fight in order to gain some understanding and help them with their insurance needs, then you're gonna you're gonna get the deal, you know. Um, you just you gotta work at it. So disability really does change your life. And uh, listen, I want to thank you guys. It's kind of a short presentation, but I, I wanted to open it up and answer any questions and, and do that if anybody would like. And I appreciate you guys for letting me come and uh, share with you. And so that's basically that's it. So is there any questions from anybody? Or? So was your stroke mostly mental or did it affect your physical ability? Uh, mostly for me it was mental. Uh, I didn't have a lot of physical um, problems. You know, every stroke is different, they say. Um, you know, I'm weaker um, now, like especially on my left side, but uh, not to the point where any, I mean, hardly anybody ever notices you know, that I've had a stroke, which actually is a, a weird thing. It's almost difficult sometimes because people wonder why you're not, you know, working or whatever. But um, I don't know, does that answer that question? I mean, it, strokes are totally different with everybody. Anybody else? When did it happen? Uh, it was 2010. One of the things that I struggle with is dates. Um, so like, I don't even know what year this is, but I know it happened in 2010. <laughs> uh, and it was a while ago. But yeah, I, I can remember when it happened um, very clearly. Um, but the dates, I don't, I don't recall. But I know it was 2010. Any other questions, you guys? So, how was the claim process, and uh, what was what was the company that you went through, and was it, was it drawn out? Did they fight you at all, or was there? Okay, that's a great question. <laughs> so, um, at first, I started. I kept working. I mean, I, I was completely off for months, a few months, and then I started going back, you know, and working, and we tried to make it work uh, because we didn't want to file, uh, really. We wanted, I wanted to stay at the company and, and uh, you know, I think they wanted me. So anyway, then as things progressed and I couldn't get back in the game, um, we looked into the process. Now, my partners looked into it without me even knowing, okay, for 
quite a bit of it, which I don't blame them. Uh, and we got an attorney just in case. We never did need her uh, to fight or anything uh, because the insurance company did did come through. But it's a process. It takes, um, you know, of course there's a 90 day, right, mm -hmm. before they pay. And that's once you actually start the claim. Um, what were some of the other questions? Uh, just beyond that with the claim, uh, so went through that with the company and how just that process in general with the company is um, oh shoot, Keith. Just a second, I'll think of it. Uh, do you know a guy named Joe Durbin? I'll think of the name of the company in a minute. Um, but uh, you know, here's one of the things I was gonna say in my presentation. Um, and, and I'll get back to answering some of your questions, but Joe, I talked to Joe uh, after the fact, and he told me, he said, no one has ever called me uh, and thanked him or, you know, not that he was looking for that necessarily. I think he was, though. Uh, it, it's like he was this lone ranger out there who sold this great insurance, and yet nobody ever even told him thank you. Right? It's a thankless job sometimes, you guys. But you got to know you're, you're making a huge difference for people. And I've let Joe know that now, of course. But uh, I, that, to me, was uh, weird almost. Um, you know? Gosh, I'll think of the name of the company in a second. <laughs> I get paid every month, right? <laughs> I see it. <laughs> yeah, let me ask you, was it a group policy that, that, that was sold to you guys through your company, or was it individual policy. And I'm kind of curious as to uh, obviously which one it is, but what made you decide to purchase the policy? Okay. So it was, they were individual policies, but there were four of us that were the owners of the company and that was it. So I don't know how that works in your field, you know, I don't know how that, it, how you do that, but he sold it to the four owners only. And they were individual policies, but the company paid for all, right? Um, and the second part of the question was? Um, what made you guys decide to? Okay, that's a great question. That is a great question. So, you know, here you are, you're running this company. Uh, you're putting all the money back into the company to grow it. And, and so, you know, who wants to spend thousands of bucks a month on insurance, right? You'd never, I mean, most people wouldn't think of that. Luckily, Michael had the uh, discipline and the self-thought-out process to think, we need, we need this. And so, um, you know, it was a process. It st I'll bet it took six months. You know, uh, when we finally reached out and we said, okay, well, let's look at it. And then uh, he got a few different sales reps to come and talk to us. Uh, and I was thinking about this this morning. I don't know if they contacted us first or if he reached out to them. Um, and I'm, God, I'm just pissed that I can't think of the name of it, but I, I will. Anyway, um, so it was a process. And Joe went through the process. And, of course, we all made the same amount of money, but we were all different. I was the best rated one out of all of our partners. You know, I was uh, not the youngest, but I was in better shape, and I got the best rate, and then boom, you know. And HHT is this, um, it was fairly new then, uh, not too many people knew about it, um, hereditary telangiectasia, they call it. Anyway, so um, it's just one of those weird things, right? So I don't know if I'm answering your question very well. No, 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 no. You're, you're, you are. You are answering. So I, like I said, I was just curious because obviously as individuals that are out trying to you know, contact people who were in the position you were in, I'm just, just curious as to what made you decide to, to go with the policy. Was it just the person that approached you or how they approached you? Just, just right. curious. One thing I want to be sure you guys understand is I am available uh, if you guys ever need to lean on me, I'll give you guys all my business card because 
I know how it is contacting you know other businesses and how you get put off and you know no and all this all this crap, but it's real, right? It happened, and it it'll happen to others, and it happens every day. And so you know if you guys need somebody to lean on, uh, you can use me anytime you want. So I'll give you guys a card. And, uh, man, I, I want to say it's. Starts with a P. Pico? No. Prudential. Principal, I think. I think it's principal. I'm not positive, but I have a follow-up question. Okay. Uh, we spent for, for much of your story of you know, food moving and got to learn a little bit about how it impacted your family. Uh, but I think we heard you mention that there's also supplemental policies built in to help your company transition while you were moving out of your role. If that wasn't in place, how many employees under you could have also potentially lost their jobs? And how yeah. Other households could that have impacted? It could have been huge. Uh, you know, uh, I think about that, that, that quarter of a million dollars that came into the company uh, was huge. Here I was, you know, I was a sales manager driving sales for our company. For three months, I didn't do a damn thing. And Chuck, poor Chuck, uh, had to take, you know, his job plus manage mine, right? And so um, it would have been devastating, frankly. Now, we didn't take that money until everything got finalized, right? Uh, let me back up because Somehow we got like fifty thousand bucks from the insurance company right when it happened, and I don't understand how that works. I don't get why that happened, but it was supposed to come to me right uh, as a person getting ready to go on disability. But the company took it because I was still getting my paycheck, which I think is fair. And um, anyway, I know it was a tough decision for the guys to make. Um, <clears throat> tough deal to go through, uh, frankly, when, when the decision was, I, I remember, and I probably boring the hell out of you guys, but one, one uh, Saturday morning, the guys call me and, hey, can we come in and have a meeting? And, yeah. I said, bring, bring Babette with you, you know, my wife. Okay. So we go in and everybody's in, in the office and we go in and sit down and, hey, how's it going? Well, we've decided to uh, let you go. You know, here you are, a business owner. You built this company, and it was a tough deal. It was tough, uh, and I had some choice things to. Anyway, but you know what? It it's been good for me. It's been good for the company. I love those guys. Uh, I talk to them now. You know, it just took a little while, uh, but thank God. Right? Thank God that we have that insurance. Now the other part of that question was, so I get a I get a a six thousand uh, dollar income and then I get another thirty five hundred, there's six thousand something and thirty five something, uh, that is uh, because part of my policy was written if I could do my job specifically for that. Yeah. And so because I couldn't do my job, that's where I got everything. And so, you know, I get almost ten thousand bucks a month in disability insurance. And I don't I don't tell anybody that. This is for this group. But you guys should be thinking about that. When you're selling insurance to business owners, I mean, get it right, you know, and and fight for it and let them know, hey something happens to you, you know, do you want 2000 bucks a month or something? I mean, you know, when they're used to making good money and, well, what I consider fair anyway. As a former small and mid-sized business owner, I'm not sure if any can come to mind at the moment, but what, what would you think would be thought-provoking or relevant questions that we should be asking you? Man, that's a good one. Um, you know, it is it is tough. I get it, because for me, what I feel is getting in front of them is the key. If you can get the meeting, 
You can plan that stuff. One thing I would say is listen. You've got to be able to listen and not just spew. Uh, so many salespeople um, come in and they just want to tell you everything about their company and how great they, you know, everything is. And it could be. Business owners, people want to say what's on their mind and let you listen and then come back with a solution. And so, for my opinion, listening is the biggest thing. And I'd even be up front with them and say, hey, you know, I'm Keith, I'm with the company, and I'm here to hear what, what you what you got, and then go from there. Oh, that's mine. Are you an intelligent policy? I'm going to cheat out on that one later. Magic bullet. Yeah, yeah. Anybody else? Thank you guys so much. Really, I, it wasn't the best, and it, I don't even try to make it the best anymore. Uh, but <laughs> <laughs> because I know how it is, right? But I sure appreciate all of you, and um, I'm proud of you guys for doing what you're doing. Uh, and I, I seriously, I've got cards. Uh, if anybody wants them, um, and you guys can lean on me anytime if that's okay with you, and uh, I'd be glad to. Uh, you got a business owner who wants to hear from another business owner? It won't bother me a bit. I'd be glad to talk to him. So, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, here I'm for you. Oh, thanks. Thanks. All right. Thank you. Thank you guys so much.